Coast is then got all vaccinated. Sun and cloud tomorrow, high of 20. Sunny Thursday in 23. A nice day on Friday with a high of 21. And so another dusty, dry day. I always wanted to be involved in agriculture. It's way bigger than going to a job and punching in and punching out. I am the first female to run ship wheel. And that means that I'm the boss of my dad, Blake, my husband, Trevor, and our three kids, and we all work here. My name is Andrea Strovisawa, and we're at Ship Wheel Cattle Feeders. It's very humbling to think that I'm the fourth generation. Our farm is predominantly a feedlot. We can take in 5,500 head. We also graze roughly 500 head on our grassland, and we have about eight, 900 acres. We're located in Tabor, Alberta. It's very dry, very sandy soil, brittle environment. My family came from Sweden. My grandpa Green grew up in the massive drought, poverty, famine. They couldn't afford to feed all the mouths that they had to feed. In the middle of the night, Albert just took it upon himself to go down to the boat docks and board a ship in search of a better life. He was 17 years old. My great grandpa Green started farming in 1893. A lot of the same problems that happened for him are affecting us here now, still 110 years later. We can't change the weather. All we can do is change what we do on the land. Farmers are blamed for cattle releasing carbon into the atmosphere. This industry, this planet, needs big, bold, passionate, brave moves, lots of them. The earth needs us. We don't have the soil, we can't continue to farm. It's been said that we have 60 years left of farming in the way that we're farming. Prior to the 80s, Shibwil was being run pretty conventionally. Typical grazing would be continuous grazing. If the cattle are allowed to graze one area for a long period of time, it depletes the grass, the root systems, and the soil. This is how we do it, and this is how it's always been done. We were not using our land to the fullest. And then came 1980. And if it's done properly... My dad, very bold, very gutsy, very brave. They're still eating. The grazing that we do here I like the term adaptive multi-paddock grazing. They told him it wasn't gonna work ever, that he was crazy. We use that same piece of land and we divide it into different sections. We move the cattle taking into account all the pieces in a complex system. The grass we just grazed, the grass we are going to graze, the rest periods and the ecosystem as a whole. That began our journey on storing carbon, increasing organic matter, and increasing the function of the soil. The misconception is that we are the problem, but what's not being looked at is that we are actually a part of the solution. The cattle aren't really the ones to blame, it's the way that we manage the cattle. If that plant is bitten too many times, it will disturb the carbon and release it back into the atmosphere. Our aim is to get one bite on every plant. If we have healthy plants, the plant is able to photosynthesize, drawing carbon from the air, driving it down in through the root systems into the soil. The carbon is then planted there and it stays there. Everything made completely logical sense in dad's brain. Very bold, very much like Grandpa Green. The water cycle started to function better. The wildlife started to come back. The natural ecosystem started to function as it, it should. I started to dig into the old grazing charts. If you looked at one acre of land and you looked at the forage that was there, it's saying that realistically it can stock 2.36 animals. Now we're at 111 on that acre for one day. 
I had to do the math about four times to convince myself that, yeah, it actually was a 3,862% increase. We are on the brink of doing some pretty amazing things in agriculture. I feel an immense responsibility. I have to push past where we are and do more, do better for the planet, for Grandpa Green, for Grandpa Holtman, for my dad, for my children. It's not one way, it's not just organic, it's not just natural, it's not just conventional, it's not big scale, it's not small scale, it's all of us together. Tabor, Alberta, December 11th, 1906. He had the dream that he was gonna be a farmer. Tell them that I think Western Canada is one of the best places they could go to. Grandpa Green's move really taught me to be bold and to be big and do things that scare you. Because you don't want to look back and say, I wish I would have. With dear regards to all of you, Albert Green. I think he'd be immensely proud of what he started. Agriculture needs more. Courageous, big, bold moves. It's all of us working together, striving for better. That's how we're gonna to contribute to being a planet of plenty.